The author of Chainsaw Man has a new one-shot titled Look Back, and it's basically a miniature Bakuman that's not really like Bakuman and has a lot of depression. And like all of his other one-shots, it's absolutely amazing. Like, seriously, Fujimoto has a knack for creating amazing one-shots that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with full-length series. I'd recommend reading all of them if you haven't already. He can portray any thought or emotion that he wants to in such a short time that I just can't believe he's not already on the top of the manga industry. But in all seriousness, this one-shot seems to be a sort of venting for Fujimoto himself, especially when you look into the later tweets. I want to go through this masterpiece and break down the series and see the meaning of it itself. Firstly, Look Back starts off with our main character Fujino being praised for her short manga strips in the school newspaper. She's apparently one of the only manga creators in the school newspaper at the time, but this would shortly change. Later that day, presumably, the teacher asks Fujino to give up one of her spots in the newspaper so that a truant student can come in and make manga even though they can't come to school. Of course, Fujino was reluctant because if someone can't even come to school, how could they be competent in art. A naive but understandable mindset for someone set in fourth grade. So once we finally see what this truant student can actually do, it blows everyone away. Their manga strips aren't short stories, but rather small displays of amazing art. And this is only in the fourth grade. Clearly they are talented and spend most of their day drawing. And this student drives Fujino to become a better artist. She throws away her social life, grades, and everything else that's in front of her to pursue becoming a better artist. This honestly kind of reflects how most mangaka have to live their lives. Even in the situation our main character is in, she isn't required to do this, but it still reflects the week-to-week -week push that mangaka have to make to hit their deadlines, usually throwing out all their connections, and many don't even live with their family, all in pursuit of hitting those deadlines and creating manga. And eventually, Fujino, after sacrificing nearly two years of her life without being able to catch up, decides to quit making manga. I can honestly relate to this a lot, and I'm sure many other people can too. When you pursue do something relentlessly but can never catch up to your rival, it's heartbreaking. But for some people, it's bound to motivate you more. Sadly, for the slightly more sane people, it's only fueling their eventual quit. And for a short bit, we see her life become surrounded by friends. Spending time with those friends, having fun, and having an overall nice life. Mainly one thing being she attends karate, you need to keep that in mind for later. Some would argue this is a happier life, but who could really say? Once Fujino actually graduates, the teacher asks her to take the diploma to that same truant student she was rivals with so long ago. At first, she was reluctant, but eventually, she finally does. Once she actually arrives to that house, she's unable to find the girl, so she slips a little comedy manga panel under her door and says she's going to be leaving the diploma there. Immediately after, the truant student, now known as Kyomoto, rushes out of the house, admitting to Fujino she is a big fan of her short series, and she begs Fujino to sign the back of her shirt. When Fujino is questioned about why she quit manga, she lies and says she's working on something new for a manga award coming up. Right here is what what the series is about. You'll see later on, but I want to keep this moment in your mind for now. Fujino is a people pleaser, and she really cares about her impact on others. Later, we see she goes back to making manga, and it's revealed that Kyomoto is working on the backgrounds for her new series. Then we see that they submit it to the manga competition, and we get a small reference to Fire Punch, one of many references to past works Fujimoto has in this series. And this leads me to believe that it is based on his life, but we will talk about that later. They go to the store and open the issue of Weekly Shonen Jump to see that they won. This is an amazing feeling that they celebrate together as it's finally something they're accomplishing together. Also, there's a nice nod to Fujimoto's editor right on the Shonen Jump pages. In the next pages, we see how Fujino has had a huge impact on Kyomoto's life as she's practically the sole reason that Kyomoto is able to leave her house. Something that would later come back to haunt Fujino, but you will see that once we get to it. They keep creating and creating and creating and creating, and we slowly see that Kyomoto is becoming more accustomed to the real world and can finally leave her house and after all this work they get serialized too and there's a major line here you've had seven one shots published by the age of 17 the editor says which is interesting because fujimoto himself had seven one shots before being serialized sure the age is probably not accurate to the real world and the fact is fujimoto is a singular mangaka and not a duo but obviously a lot of things are going to be changed in fiction but they can still relate back to the real world like i said before more of this will come later directly after this kyomoto tells Fujino that she can no longer work on the manga series, and she wants to pursue art school for now. Fujino wants Kyomoto to stay with her and grow that way, but Kyomoto wants to become an independent and no longer have to rely on Fujino, like she has for the past several years. Kyomoto leaves Fujino to pursue art school as Fujino goes to create Shark Kick, a obvious reference to both Chainsaw Man and Fire Punch. Next, Fujino, while creating her manga, would see on the news that Kyomoto and her school have been attacked by
by a man with an axe. And we shortly see that Fujino indirectly made Kiyomoto go to art school. She said they both need to improve their art. The only difference is how they went about that. Fujino wanted to continue making manga and improve naturally, while Kiyomoto wanted to go to art school and have more concentrated improvement. Fujino starts to be overcome with guilt and loses the ability to continue Shark Kick for now. Oddly enough, Shark Kick stops at 11 volumes, which is what Chainsaw Man recently stopped at for the end of part one. I don't think this actually has any connection, but you know, it could. Kyomoto is revealed to have been killed in the incident, and Fujino blames it all on herself. All the way back, to when she slipped that little manga panel under the door. We then see an alternate reality in which Kyomoto never knew it was Fujino delivering the diploma. Only for it to go about the exact same, Kyomoto ends up in art school. This is clearly a delusion as Fujino was the sole reason that Kyomoto left her house. Fujino is creating up this delusion in her head and both us and Fujino know that. Without Fujino in Kyomoto's life, there would have never been that opportunity. Kyomoto likely would have stayed a recluse forever, never growing as a person. And then at the end of this alternate reality, Fujino says that Kyomoto should join her as an assistant as she picks back up manga. This is clearly a big leap in Fujino's brain and she's trying to find out what went wrong, but it doesn't matter, you can't turn back time. While according to determinism, Fujino actually caused this, she shouldn't be blaming it on herself. And then she realizes this exact alternate ending comes straight from a comic strip she made in middle school. And we see a flashback of her telling Kyomoto she really doesn't like creating manga, only for Kimoto to ask why she draws. The answer is, of course, the impact on people's lives that she has. In a real alternate reality, Kyomoto would have been alive but stayed a recluse. But in this one, Kyomoto got to live a real life because Fujino and her manga impacted her so much. Fujino, at the end, goes back to creating Shark Kick, hopeful that she will change more lives. So what is this one shot trying to say? Well, it's very clear that it's some sort of story from Fujimoto's life or derived from Fujimoto's life. And when you tie in this tweet from Fujimoto saying that there is Dondadon backgrounds and previous Fujimoto backgrounds, it starts to make a little more sense. See, Yukinobu Tatsu was a previous assistant of Fujimoto, and he later went to create Dondadon after Chainsaw Man was done. Personally, I think this series could be about Fujimoto and Yukinobu separating after the end of Chainsaw Man, but since we'll likely never know the actual context of them separating, we can never say for sure. But Fujimoto has had many assistants, and he didn't include any of his other assistants' backgrounds, even though many Many of them went to become great mangaka, like in the case of Yuji Kaku and Tatsuya Endo. Yuji Kaku went on to create Hell's Paradise, and Tatsuya Endo is currently making Spy X Family. It's possible he only included Dondadon backgrounds because those are the most similar to Chainsaw Man, art-wise and story-wise, but that might also give credit to why this is about their separation. See, that could mean they had a very, very direct link with each other and are good friends. Fujimoto could have known that him going on to create his own manga would be better for his life but almost selfishly wished that he had stayed with him. This one-shot almost feels too personal to just be about something he decided to create randomly. While I might have interpreted it wrong, there's still some sort of personal meaning here. Whether it is or isn't about their separation, it's still an amazing story that many famous people in anime manga are coming out to promote, such as Inio Asano, the mangaka of Goodnight Poon Poon, and Wataru Watori, the author of Oregayo. I truly believe that every step forward Fujimoto takes, that he is gonna be the next great mangaka. And I think that can all be summed up to the fact that he doesn't care about his characters. He himself admitted recently that he doesn't care about what happens to his characters, and he does whatever he has to for them to develop. There's basically no boundary with Fujimoto. Unlike other mangaka who might be afraid of killing off characters or putting them out of the picture once their use is over, Fujimoto is different. This is easily seen in this one shot by the fact that he killed off Kyomoto instead of just having her leave, leading to a more meaningful story and a much more heartbreaking one. I hope you guys enjoyed, remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.